I'm Grim Grindle and welcome to this video. If fiction writers can agree on one thing, it's that an exposure to radiation will either make you a superhero or make you really, really big. And the 1950s gave us a colossal version of practically everything. We had big spiders, big blobs, big birds, big women, and that's not even considering what the Japanese gave us. But what happens if you want to make a giant monster movie and all the good ideas are taken? Well, you get this movie. Cue title card. Attack of the Giant Leeches is a 1959 sci-fi horror film about sort of leeches that are kind of big. I say sort of leeches because you never really get a very good look at them. The movie is black and white to begin with, and when the leeches are actually on the screen, it's even darker. They are never shown in their entirety, with most shots being extreme close-ups, and even these close-up shots are usually pretty darn quick. I guess I can sort of see a resemblance between them and leeches, but as I said, it's really quite hard to tell. And I say kind of big, because as you can see by the footage on the screen right now, they're not that much larger than the humans that they're terrorizing. However, if they are in fact leeches, as far as leeches go, these are pretty humongous. So while this almost certainly does not actually qualify as a giant monster movie because the monster is simply not large enough, you know, it's not crawling over buildings or anything, it's more of a creature of the Black Lagoon kind of monster, but in the sense of comparative size towards normal leeches, they're definitely pretty far above average. So what exactly is the storyline? Well, it follows a group of characters who live in a swamp area and are plagued by a monster. Or more accurately, a couple of monsters, or even more accurately, a couple of rather large leeches. It is, for the most part, pretty much a very cookie-cutter monster movie. We have the old guy who saw the monster at the start of the film telling everyone that he saw a monster and everyone making fun of him in disbelief. And then throughout the film there are a couple more encounters, a couple of people go missing, the law enforcement and the populace start to think maybe there's something to these monster stories, all leading towards the end of the film in which they look for the monster, encounter the monster, and of course defeat the monster. Oh, and of course the three main characters are a knowledgeable elderly scientist, his attractive daughter who is adventurous and of course also knowledgeable in the ways of science, who are both accompanied, as you may well expect, by our protagonist, a masculine former military male. The film is through and through an extremely stereotypical monster movie. In fact, so much so that it's the sort of movie that you would expect to be a movie inside of a movie, entirely made up with the intention of parodying how cookie cutter this genre is. Despite all of this, I really did enjoy the film. It's definitely not a good movie, and it's definitely not worthy of sci-fi minecart, and it definitely didn't break any new grounds or do anything spectacularly important, or even have very good characters or a very good storyline. However, while it failed to do any of those things, what it did succeed in doing is exactly what I said it succeeded in doing. It is a cookie-cutter monster movie from the 1950s, and so if you are already into the genre, it's not a bad film to turn off your brain for a little while and just enjoy some brainless monster action. It's sort of like re-watching your favourite movie. You already know exactly what's going to happen, but you'd like to see it happen again anyway. Except it's a slightly different movie with slightly different visuals, slightly different actors, despite really just being the exact same thing. The film is mercifully short, it's only 62 minutes long so it's not like it's a long time investment, which is probably a good thing because the characters in the film are not very good. Well, most of the characters are not very good, the three main characters are rather likeable, but then every single other character in the film is pretty much terrible. I suppose that's one thing the film did different than every single other monster movie, in the sense that the woman who ended up being kidnapped by the monster, along with the other townsfolk, but the woman who ended up being kidnapped and actually saved, is a terrible person. She's literally cheating on her husband when the giant leeches take her, and every other scene we get in the movie, she's just being pretty unpleasant. If this were pretty much any other monster movie, the monster would have taken the attractive daughter of the scientist, because she's actually nice, and so the audience has at least some form of investment in her, and also because she actually has a tie to the protagonist, and so therefore he has a reason to actually be questing to get her back. But with the character they actually took, I found it hard to really care about her return. Moving on to the antagonists, the giant leeches, they are not actually that terrible. Not unlike the movie is so short that you don't really get a chance to think about how bad it is, all scenes with the leeches are so dark and so brief that you don't really get a good look at how bad they probably look. Keeping all exposure to monsters in a horror movie dark and brief is a tried and true technique. It covers a multitude of sins and allows a costume that would usually be met with ridicule instead be supplemented by the imagination of the viewers. They at the very least look leagues better than the bird in the giant claw, and honestly as far as B-grade sci-fi horror films go, they're not that bad. 
this scene where it's sucking a victim's blood out of its ear is kind of terrifying, so I give the giant leeches in Attack of the Giant Leeches a resounding thumbs up. And also, further in the film's defence, we do get some fairly ambitious underwater shots, which can't have been easy or cheap in the 1950s. So overall, Attack of the Giant Leeches, a generic B-grade sci-fi horror film, which only really distinguishes itself in the bizarre choice of having the antagonist kidnap a character no one cares about. It's far from a good movie, and if you really want to see a good movie about a monster in a swamp, go watch Creature from the Black Lagoon. I really don't suggest anyone who's not already into the genre of sci-fi horror to bother watching this film. There's just a menagerie of sci-fi horror films that are far better that really should be your first choice. But on the other hand, if you're like me, and you're already hooked on the sci-fi horror genre, and you don't mind having a movie that's just pretty brainless but fun, then this one, generic as it is, is mercifully short and does have some good monster scenes. Thanks for watching, and as always, until next time, I have been and still am Grim Grindle.